Welcome, welcome, Dr. Stephen Hobbs here from the Wealth Movement. This is Trees Every Day, number six for February 2021. And Trees Every Day is a video I shoot on a Sunday that shares a thought, an idea, an insight, an investigation with you. And today it's going to be about architecture and architecture. Uh, a little bit of a different way of spelling architecture so that um, I can offer up an insight that might be of value to you when you're looking at the path that you're walking as a grandparent who may be still working or uh, as a grandparent who are interacting with your grandchildren in the out of doors. And the distinction that I'm going to make will add to the ethical values and ecological literacy videos that I have shot in the other videos, especially two through five. What I also do is encourage you to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notification when the next video is available and comment, like, share. I appreciate hearing from you and we can then learn together. Now, to be able to get this set up, to look at architecture and architecture, is to remind ourselves of the black arrow that's here, that in a sense is going from the bottom left to the top right of a page. Now, this is an arrow that you see in a lot of my videos. It's called a perspective arrow. I also will call it the path that one takes. It's a reminder that we walk a path and there's stepping stones and logs, just as I could say, it's sort of like a river and there's the two banks that are here and you're floating down the river. There's a lot of ways in which I can use metaphors with the arrow. But in today's case, what I wanted to do was just share with you the following, is if we find ourselves, this is a starting point and we move up what I'm suggesting is, is that there is a movement in time and space. So let me do it this way. If this is A, then this would be B, which means that that's A, that's B. What I'm attempting to do is suggest that in the movement from A to B, there is a movement that takes place through time and space. And that's why I've always appreciated the arrow because it kept reminding me about how whatever I'm looking at moves through time and space. Uh, I had the pleasure of studying geography, which is about the study of a phenomena in time and space. And I did it both from a physical sense and a social sense. And then when I did um, later studies, I did it from a ecological recreation, eco-recreation perspective. And it's always helped me to keep in mind is that there is a sense of a history and a mystery, um, a past, present, future, uh, to always keep bringing those insights into what I was looking at to help me with my perspective. Now, another way in which to take a look at this, as you remember, I said is that this could be a path that you could take, or it could be the river that you're paddling along and what I wanted to do is just remind you that this path that you're taking is about learning as it is about educating. And I say that from the following phrase. Again, in many of the videos and in my writing, you'll see this phrase. And it is, when you listen, you learn. Where you share, you educate. So when you are listening with your two ears, you are listening and therefore learning. You are taking it in. Where you share, in other words, to speak out or write with or write for, you are educating. And therefore, there's this connection between learning and educating. And it's a, um, a wonderful balance on once learned and to be able to then learn how to share how to educate, then as you become better at educating, you become better at learning <laughs> and listening. And it's wonderful, wonderful insight that once you grab it and you bring it into yourself, 
it makes such a difference in all the kind of conversations that you're having, even with a book, <laughs> is often, and just as a sidebar here, when I read a book, other than maybe it's a fiction, so from a nonfiction point of view, I will ask the book three questions, and then I will seek out the answers to those questions. So in a sense, I'm listening to what the book is sharing, but the question is like, I'm educating the book to help me with my learning. I appreciate it's a, a little different, I get that, but it's also a way to just remind me of this interaction that takes place between learning and educating. And therefore, I want to, need to <laughs> highlight the following, is that what's happening here is that this is shared. It's important to understand that the path of learning and educating, the gaining of perspective is shared. You're not doing it just in and of yourself. Um, I mentioned the book. So a book could become a mentor of yours. It's possible. Just as there are people that you interact with on a given day and they may not ever say anything, they may just grunt and walk by you, you will get a sense of some learning and educating that can take place in that arena. So when you think about this from a grandparent, 55 plus year young person, looking at the years ahead of you, how might you be able to share your learning and educating from a lived experience perspective, from a legacy perspective, so that you might figure out, well, what additional ways or places I want to go on my path to enrich my life, uh, to even make commitments to do something um, a little bit different than what you have done, because you have that in front of you. You have those other kinds of experiences that can unfold for you. So I just wanted to remind you about this path of learning and educating. It's shared, and it operates in time and space. That's what the black arrows about. There's gonna be another video that I will uh, unpack what I call my visual language. And it might happen over a series of presentations. When I was um, in my days of working on HIV and AIDS in Africa, I came to understand this time and space, but more that there's more to understanding learning and educating. And it was at that time I developed a 10 dimensional, yes, <laughs> 10 dimensional learning framework that has helped me tremendously in being able to look at, get a sense of what's happening in the world, in the situation I might find myself. So it's like the, um, the basis, the, uh, one of the frameworks that I work from to be able to do the work that I do. And I will share that with you as time goes by. And I might even create a short course to offer that, uh, that learning to you. And by you getting involved with it, you'll help educate me. And that will be really a wonderful exchange. So let's look forward to that together and let's see what happens, okay? Okay, so now what I wanna do is that I wanna take a look at the terms architecture and architecture. And what I'm gonna do is just again, remind us is that there is this whole notion of learning and educating and that it is shared just to remind us and operates in time and space. Now, what becomes important here is that there's really a one letter difference between the two words. It's the C and the X. And it's kind of an interesting is that to see something and to sort of mark the X of where it is. It's, um, there's a bit of a time and space with that, even with the C and an X, uh, but it's also about uh, customer experience, client experience. So it's kind of fun from that way uh, of looking at it as well. But I think what will help here is let's just unpack the words just a little bit. And what I wanted to do is just share with you what archi means. So in the use of architecture and architecture, is archi is about begin first to the rules. So if you think from um, an architecture point of view with the C, to see it 
before it happens, that's when we create things like the blueprint, true? We have the notion of the blueprint so that you can see what it is that you're going to uh, build. And this becomes interesting for us is because once we understand about what we see and we can then work with it, then we can learn to manage that build, to use that blueprint to do our managing uh, from, which then allows us to understand what are the systems we're going to put in place to have this happen. So the architecture that's going on here is the one with the C, to see it and then to be able to use what we see to be able to build it, to manage it, to create the systems that are necessary to move it forward. Now on the flip side with the X, all right, it's also another way of looking at the experience which speaks more to um, me as a person, all right? So the notion of person or persons, it's letting us understand uh, looking at it from an architecture point of view to think about what it is that we're going to grow. And therefore, what we're going to do is look at the creation of the landscape. And when we understand the landscape about what's there, we can then figure out what we want to grow. Just like with a blueprint, we can figure out what we want to build. Which means it leans into the world of to lead. So you manage the systems just as you lead the person or persons. And that's the value of understanding it. So then architecture is the X, the experience that you're going to create. You wanna see what you're gonna build and what's the experience that you're going to grow for someone. And therefore the notion of architecture and architecture they chase each other in a sense. They're, they're um, supportive of one another. So when I think of architecture, I've got the sense of build. When I have architecture, I have the sense of grow. So I can see the building as I can experience the growing of it. I'm hoping this makes sense to you because I'm always looking for ways in which to enrich my understanding and finding like when I have a stick, when I pick up one end of the stick, I actually pick up the other end of the stick. So whenever I'm doing something to manage, I'm also leading. When I'm going to do something where I'm gonna build, there's gonna be some grow aspect to it. If I'm gonna be working with systems, I'm gonna then interact with persons and vice versa and therefore, this architecture sort of follows this line as architecture follows that line. And it gives me an opportunity to balance those two aspects of my learning and educating. So if I'm going to build a building or I'm going to grow a garden, there's a different way in which to look at it. And one of the ways in which I would offer to you, which we'll learn more about as we go along, is that this is about wealth with an A, as this is wealth with an L. So I'm attempting to suggest the accounts, the accruals, and then there's the, the living and laughing and learning. And they, again, they're balancing off. So from an architecture point of view, you're figuring out the systems you're gonna manage so that you can build it. From an architecture point of view, you're gonna be thinking about the, the laughing and the, and the loving and the leading so that you're growing it. But again, please remember, they're chasing each other. It's like picking up a stick. When you pick up one end of the stick, you pick up the other end of the stick. To have a coin, you have one side of the coin and you have the other side of the coin or else you would not have a coin. Yes, two sides make up the coin. So whenever you're looking at one side, you have to be aware of what's on the other side. And that's why I 
sort of created this as a way to remind myself of what's possible. Another way to look at this is that this is about profitability and this is about movement. Now, I've shared some of those insights in other videos and you can certainly, I'll put the links below so that you can chase down this notion of profitability and movement. And you can go and take a look and see what's going on there. Because what's actually taking place is that there's a sense of what's called ecological profitability as there is ethical movement. Okay, <laughs> so ecological profitability, profiting the, the wealth is created from an ecological, ecological literacy perspective. I'm gonna ask you to put your hat on for that one and think about that and certainly share comments below about it, which means then there is something called ethical movement or ethical values, which are the values that we share about interacting with one another, persons, how we grow our relationships from a ecological, how might the ecological literacy, the elements of ecological literacy inform how we build things? Well, let's see where that might take you and please interact below and share your thoughts and see if I'm on track for you or you've got something else that you would like to offer. Again, I so enjoy learning and yes, I'm playing with some ideas here, some insights. This is certainly built on investigation for 30 plus years and different kinds of projects that I've worked on around the world. This is what has unfolded for me, which is why in the work that I'm doing now with grandparents and those who are 55 plus years young who can be grandparents, and their legacy story, where might we go? And what I do when I'm sharing uh, facilitative mentoring, I'm getting them to think about their architecture, what they're gonna build and manage, as I'm gonna get them to understand about their architecture, which is what they're going to grow and they're gonna lead. And how might those two elements work together, weave together and form a way in which to keep walking the path or if you will, uh, kayaking, canoeing, rafting, if you want to see this as a river. It's another way in which to just guide you forward. And I always pleasantly say is that what I am is a guide on the ride. <laughs> so if you're walking or you're paddling or whatever it might be, I'm a guide on the ride. And that's where my facilitative mentoring uh, comes in. So I'm hoping that this is, is helpful to you because the path that you're going to take, the learning that you're going to bring into your life is a 55 plus years young and how you want to share out your lived experience and the experiences that you're having is to understand the path and the, and the parameters, the, a way in which to look at that path, the, the perspective that you're, you're gaining and uh, that's what this is about. And uh, no matter how you um, want to look at it, whatever it is that something, whether it's something that exists now or you are bringing into your life to bring it into what's called thingness, that something occurs in time and space. And when you start to unpack it, un un unfold it from that perspective, you can start to see this notion of um, future and past, uh, uh, the idea of being present, the mystery and history. And when you've got more perspectives to work at from what it is that you're working on, wow, it just enriches, deepens who you are and what it is that you can offer others. And I know for, I'll say for a fact, that the grandchildren, for those interacting with the grandparents who use a nature-based approach to walk in and amongst the trees, the stories that start to unfold, the, the way of looking at the world, the way of living and being for the world, it, I, I think it just 
is, is such a beautiful, beautiful experience for both the grandparents and the grandchildren, which is why I've chosen for my path is to work with the grandparents and grandchildren to look at the story of legacy and how trees and eco creation interact with all that to form um, a wealth perspective, my wealth perspective, and then I can figure out my other wealth perspective. So with that, I'm, I'm going to um, close off. I'm going to wish you the best. And again, to remind you, please uh, subscribe, ring the bell, and comment, like, and share. I'd, I'd love to learn from you what it is that um, I can offer, Aaron. Or even maybe there's something I mentioned here you want me to take a little bit more of a deeper dive. Let's, let's get involved with it. That's why Trees Every Day is a, such an important um, event, <laughs> experience in my life on a Sunday. Because I get a chance to just share out a way of uh, looking at uh, the world, being for the world, and offering you some insights that would be of help to you. And what I'm going to do actually next week in Trees Every Day number seven is that I'm going to place a tree over top of this so that you can see how I link a tree onto this path of shared learning and how the tree has a literal and metaphoric representation of your life unfolds and why the tree of life, the, the use of trees to explain what's happening in our lives is such a great metaphor. So with that, take care.